Okay guys, we had some issues um, trying to figure out how to send serial communication from um, a Siemens processor. Here, my uh, twist configuration. I have the S7, DC, 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 um, 1214C, I believe it is, processor model number. Okay, that's right here, 1214C, DC, DC, DC. And then I have the CM1241 RS232 module. So RS232 is a serial communication um, standard. There's also, I don't know what the other real common one is, 485, 486, something like that. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's, it's also really common. Um, 232 is like the, the original serial communication. Um, a lot of Alan Bradley's use 232. So, we have this connected. It's a module that, that plugs into the side of the regular processor module, and it has a nine pin DB9 um, serial connector on the bottom of it. We have a serial cable coming out of it, and I have that going into a computer so I can tell if I'm actually sending signals. What we're trying to do is send signals over the serial interface out of this card. Um, so what I did was I added a program block called send PTP. That's over here on the bottom right. Send PTP is going to be under communication. So under communication processor, because it's its own card that plugs into the main processor, it has its own processing inside that communication card. And then point to point, and then send PTP. So what send PTP does is it transmits the send buffer data. See the pop up there. So it just, takes whatever is in the buffer and sends it to the other module that's plugged into the processor. And then that other module sends it out of the port in the right format. Um, so you have to have something in your buffer to send. All this does is tell it what's in the buffer to go to the other module. So here is the function block for it, send PTP. Um, this, so it's enabled by default. You can put something in there, but it always has power. So it always has the ability to send. This REQ is when it gets this signal is when it actually checks the buffer, sees what's in there and sends it, but it only does it once. So this is a, a bool, it's a boolean variable. So it's either true or false or on or off or a one or a zero. So when it goes from false to true, it just checks the buffer and sends what's in the buffer once. When it's on true, it doesn't just continuously send what's in the buffer. Um, so what I have it set to is a clock tag PLC tags. So some of you guys haven't done any SEMA stuff yet, so this will all look super foreign to you. Um, show all tags. Here I have, this is that clock, five hertz. This is the tag that I'm using. Um, right now it's true, but it's tied to the system clock of the processor. These are all default tags that you can add into your system. Um, so I got to start the processor. So right now the processor is not running, so none of these are changing states. But once I go to the processor, here, hit run. Do I want to run it? Yep, I do. Go back to LC tags. Tags. And I'm online right now. So you see all these changing. So like this one, so one hertz, we know 60 hertz for the frequency for AC electricity is 60 times a second. So what would one hertz be? One times a second. So this is going to change on and off for false. It's a bool data type. Every second, it'll switch. Um, this one is going to be every every two seconds because it's 0.5 hertz, it's half of a hertz. Um, I have it tied to one that goes five hertz, so five times a second. Back to our block there. So this is switching states five times a second. Five times a second, it's telling this um, function block to look at what's in the buffer and send it. And this is the port that it's on. So you it'll be blank when you first put this function block in here and you'll click on here and I'll have a pull down list of all your options for what you can select for it. And the one that says RS232 and it says CM1240, 1241, that's the name of the module. If you look right on the front of the module, it says CM1241 and RS232 is the standard. So that's what we want. Um, and then it defaults to two, 269 in this case, but it automatically fills in that number. You didn't need to know it. All you got to do is put a clock frequency in there, how, how often you want to update the data being sent, where you want it to be sent from, 
and then here's my buffer. This is what actually is going to be sent. So I made a data block called data block one dot incoming data. So here is data block one. This looks crazy at first, but so you make a new data block, you call it what you want. So I typed in this incoming data up here, and then you have a pull down up here, three times, and you can select what type of data it is and how big the array is. So an array is just a list, a long list of numbers. So I selected the data type of character. You can make it integers, you can make it whatever you want. I made it characters because usually in serial communication, you're using ASCII. Um, so there's a, a defined character set in, in ASCII. So you don't want to pick something that will possibly be trying to send something that there's not an ASCII character for because it's I get into a bunch of it. So characters, I made it 255 locations, although I'm not using anywhere near that many. Um, so I'll close that out and I'll go back to what it was. So data type, all these, so when you select array, put that one, I could make this to whatever, I could make this to 10 and then it would only be down to about here. Um, it'll fill in all these where it says character and it'll fill in all this incoming data and with the, the number at the end of it saying which one of these, which number of this array it is. Um, and all these start values all default to this quotes with single quotes with nothing in, nothing in them. So I added in each character. So it's going to, when it looks at the buffer, let's go here quick. when it looks at this incoming data block one incoming data buffer, it'll go over here and it'll send this first character, second character, third character, fourth character, fourth character is just a blank space. And it'll just keep going down the list. And because I have 255, it's going to send a whole bunch of blank characters there at the end too. Um, and it sends it real quick. And then, it does, so it does it five times a second. So what would that be? One twentieth of a second later, it does it again, right? Um, anyway, so that's what you do. You put this block in, send PTP. Make sure this is set right for however often you want to send it. Make sure you have your right port set up and make a data block, direct it to the data block and put what you want sent in the data block. You can leave all this as is, and you can leave this um, PT RCL as is. And this by default will be on all the time. This is just your energize and then the or enable, and then your enable out. You don't have to connect anything. Either. So really just drag this block in, make sure these three things are set right. You're good, but you have to create this other data block. Um, so we're running right now, right? So let me go back to this processor and stop the processor show you how i know that this is working Don't the yes so it doesn't come with windows anymore by default but hyper terminal used to come with all windows and hyper terminal is just a window where you can receive um, like modem connections and serial connections, and you can just look at the raw data coming in over a communication port, um, like your COM ports and your LPT ports. So I want to open, I set up a profile already. Well, I could probably just start making a new one from scratch to show what it looks like if you wanted to try this. Um, new connection, I'll call it serial. Okay. You I know mine's COM3. The way you would know that is you go here and you type in device manager. And you look at ports. So I know I have a USB to serial adapter and that's what I'm using on this. And it says COM3 right after it. So that's how I know which COM to put in here. COM3, okay. I know I have my card on my PLC set to 9600, 9.6K uh, baud. And I know eight, nine, and one is how I have it set up and I have no flow control. Um, you have to set that in your, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so now this is monitoring the serial connection that's going into the computer. So if out coming out of the PLC, I'll take a picture of it. I have a, a serial cable coming out of the PLC and going into, my, into the same computer that I'm looking at right now. So as soon as I turn this PLC processor to run, I should start receiving over here in this terminal window that I'm, I'm listening on right now works. There it is. So this is all the serial commands that are, or the serial characters that I'm sending through that cable from this PLC back into this same computer through a USB adapter 
just be a serial. So the reason everything's offset and all those, everything's spaced out are all those, I put 255 characters that it's sending, but there's a ton of blanks. There's like a 230 blanks or whatever. That's, that's why it's spaced the way it is. Um, I could change that array to only be however many uh, characters this is, and then it would just be this thing over and over and over and over, it fill the entire screen. Um, so then when I stop the processor, I stop receiving data into my serial terminal. Minimize that. Maximize that. So where you set the serial, let's see if I can do it here. So I'm in uh, devices. Press 232 interface, here under general, here it is. So when you're looking at your devices, if you, this is another view that you see sometimes too. So here's my processor and here's the, my add-on serial card and there's where the plug is for the cable. Um, I'll put a picture in here of it. And I set it in here to 9.6 KB because I know the thing that I'm eventually going to hook this up to uses uh, 9600 baud. 9.6k BPS bits per second. Um, I know that's what I'm eventually going to use, so I could I could set this to anything as long as I set my hyper terminal to the same speed and it would work. Um, but I know my end goal is to have it run at 9600, so I just set it to that now. Um, and this is pretty standard, eight one and none, um, and no parity means there's not a check bit at the end. Which I don't know if you guys if any of the softwares remember talking about parity bits last year um, and flow control none. So that's why I set my hyper terminal that way because I went with everything here was set by this way by default except the baud rate I set to nine point six. Um, so then I just copied all these settings on my uh, hyper terminal to make sure everything matched to make sure it would have a good handshake. Um, I think that's it. So if I wanted to send some other data instead of the one that I sent, I would go into the program or the uh, data block. So you can see it says it's possible Rob Sanders because he was working on this for a while. Um, so that's just what I typed, but I could change, I could change these letters to anything that I wanted to send. So I'm going to have to send hex data. So it's going to be like three X and then a space and then two more digits and then a space. Um, and they're going to be two position hex numbers that I'm sending to a servo motor. Um, I just wanted to make sure everything was going to work right. So I set it up like this and I thought it'd be more interesting for you guys to look at. Um, all right. I think that's it. I wanted to talk about. Yeah.